What we're now going to demonstrate is intravenous cannulation. To do this, we need a cannula, a tourniquet, a dressing to hold the cannula in position, a wipe just to prepare the skin, and a normal saline flush to flush through the cannula once you've been successful with your cannulation. So to select the vein, we attach the, the tourniquet and then we need to look for a vein. When you've identified a vein, you want to make sure that it's nice and straight. There's no valves and they're identified by sort of lumps in the middle of the vein. And I want to feel it. It should be a natural sort of bouncy, sort of rubbery sort of spring to it. When you've identified your vein, release your tourniquet and then you can prepare your equipment for the cannulation. So I'm preparing my cannula, take out its packaging. I tend to remove the white cap here because you need to attach that to the, at the end. Open up the wings there, just that goes next to the skin. Open up your dressing for your cannula. And we have everything else prepared. Next, I'm going to reattach the tourniquet on. Go back to the vein that I identified. Just feel again, make sure there's no valves again. I'm going to remove the outer sheath. And then, just at a slight angle, just under 40 degrees, using my fingers to keep the skin slightly taut, not too taut that it's going to decompress the, the vein, but taut it doesn't move. I'm just going to follow the line of the vein, insert. What you've noticed is there's some flashback there, okay? That indicates that I'm in the vein. I then advance it just slightly and then the next part I'm holding the back of the needle and I'm actually sliding the vein flon in. Okay, so I'm keeping hold of the needle and I'm pushing the venflon off the needle and then what I need to do is I need to release the tourniquet, press on the vein above where I've injected and then I need to insert the white cap over there. That's the cannula in position. I'll attach the, the slight pad underneath the wings there. And then I attach the dressing to the venflon as such. That's it in position. Because there was some flashback in the venflon, I need to inject the normal saline in. Just 10 mils is enough. Doing so, you're looking at the vein just to make sure that it's flowing naturally, there's no bulges or any signs that it become it's, it's come outside the vein. There we have a cannulation. John's unwell and I've decided that it's very important to put an intravenous cannula up on him and run some fluid in. Most important thing here when we're doing this is to make sure you're prepared, the patient is prepared and you're in the right position. It's very difficult to put up drips if you're all in the wrong position. So as you can see, John is lying down. I've got my drip set sorted out. I've got John's arm ready and I want to clean it. So again, preparation is good. So I clean the arm and allow the arm to dry with its antiseptic. And then I want to see if I can find some veins. So I put the tourniquet on and I ask John to open and close his hand. Here you will normally find a good vein on the arm and near the end of the arm, by the wrist but not at the wrist, you'll find a V-junction. That's always a good point to insert your venflon because actually the V tethers the, the vessel itself so that the, uh, when you put the cannula in, it doesn't move around and also it's on the part of the arm that's already stabilized because it's on the bone. If you invest, if you, if you put your um, drip into a, the wrist, the wrist moves and you've got problems. If you put it in here, you may also have problems when you bend and move around. 
it's always good to have it in an area that's stabilized. And, and then when I come to insert the drip, I want to get myself really well positioned so I can see the vessel, I know exactly where it is, and I go for one that I can palpate, which is more important than just one that you can see. Plenty of small vessels you can see, but they're not good enough to put a drips up in. And then stretch the skin, and then I'll insert my Venflon. I've washed my hands. And then put my gloves on. Using the same technique as you've just seen. So it's a clean technique. Okay, again, being prepared is very important. Make sure the vessel is up. Perfect. Always check that your Venflon moves well. Okay. And when you're here, you want to get yourself level. Make sure there's no one getting in the way. There's the V. I strengthen it, I insert, go in, flat, in, and then you see a little flashback here. Can you see the little flashback? That shows that the, the cannula is actually in the vessel and you get a little bit of blood there. When that's in, you then withdraw the needle, leaving the cannula in and you'll see the flashback there. And then you insert the cannula the rest of the way. At that stage you want to release the tourniquet so there is not back pressure on the uh, Venflon and causing a lot of blood leakage. You then get your fixation dressing out and the aim of this is to make sure that your Venflon is secured safely and appropriately on the arm in the right direction as the vessel. Now you'll notice here that there's clear tape in a sense dressing above where the Venflon goes in. This is very important because the clarity of the dressing here allows you to see if there's any redness or infection developing over where the Venflon has gone in. This allows you, particularly in a saturation environment where infections might be likely to be common, to make sure that as long as this is free, non-painful and non-swollen and obviously red and angry, that the Venflon can stay in if it's flowing well. If however you get an area here that's red, angry and painful, then you may say I need to recite my Venflon because I'm developing an infection here. You then have this area here and basically you take the needle out and you will connect your intravenous fluid administration giving set to this end and we'll discuss that in a moment.